Hey there. Hey. <laughs> How's your head? My, my head? No complaints. <laughs> goodness hello everyone <laughs> welcome back yes well you were gone they don't know because we do this twice a week but we had already recorded but you just went on a trip and so if you follow me on all my platforms and you see my stories you've seen that I made the comment one day I was waiting for you to call um because I don't want to be that wife that's like constantly calling him when he's on a guy trip. So I was thinking maybe that might be a good thing for us to talk about today. Because what do you think the reason is that people call nonstop when people are away? Trust. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about trust. <laughs> Have you ever been in a relationship where you were accused of crap you didn't do? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think anybody that's dated, at, yeah. I mean, anything more than one person has probably lived that at some point. I would think. It sucks. Yeah. It really does suck. Um, I, I dealt with it for a very long time, <laughs> but it, it's awful when you're accused of stuff but I don't know what do you think well what do you think brings mistrust in a relationship I don't know mm -hmm. well, I think I think it comes from a few things I think it can come from a past betrayal I think sometimes it's just in your blood this type of person you are you just don't trust nobody. Well, it's an insecurity. That's what it I was going to say next. Is yeah. it, it's, it's an insecurity. It has more to do with the person that feels that way than it does the person they're accusing. Yeah. In a lot of cases. And then... Because I know, I know people that trust everybody. And then I know people that don't trust anybody. You know? Well, I don't trust much many people. But I trust you completely. Why do you think that is? I give you no reason not to. Well, you give me no reason not. <laughs> it's more than not giving me any reason. It's just love. Not to. You treat me with so much love and respect that the thought that you would do something like that or even feel something for somebody that you would even want to I just can't even wrap my mind around it but that's because you show me that kind of love and that's the love that I feel for you right I mean I'm you know look we're not blind we see attractive people there are attractive people out there uh, it doesn't I, mean you yeah, want to I hop mean, in the bed with them. No, I mean, I just, <laughs> I just come home from uh, a hunting trip up north, and, you know, it's just out in, in Illinois. It's just little small farm towns. Where's this going? Little, <laughs> no, it's just an exa just example of I come home telling you about this, these two ladies that run this oh, yeah. working yeah. restaurant. They're uh after talking to them, they're Dominican, but they're very attractive ladies. Very nice. And I was just telling, coming home and telling her how, how pretty they are and how, how nice they are. And, and you know, and a lot of situations. Did they have a really great accent, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That just adds on to it, and, doesn't it? <laughs> and, you know. But have I ever? No. Actually, I, mean, I think that's something that you were uncomfortable with. Yeah. In our relationship. Yeah, a lot of times she would point at, point out, you know, somebody, lady would walk by with a nice figure and she'd point it out. And I'm, I, you know, at first I didn't know what to say. Did you think I was trying to trick you? We, yeah, we were, <laughs> we were walking out from work one day and her, her friend in front of us, and she 
pointed out how nice her butt looked in those pants and she's like don't they don't it don't let, I, I, I don't know what to say here, <laughs> you <know>? yes <laughs> but i mean now that we've been together a while you're more comfortable with, like you realize that i don't i'm not doing it to try to trick you or no, anything no. i just i recognize when somebody looks good whether it be male or female I just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm like, hey, check it out. They put some hard work into that bootay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're blessed with it, one. But, yeah, I think, I don't know. I mean, you do. You make me feel very, very secure and very comfortable. But I also feel the kind of love that I have for you I don't see people in any way other than that's a beautiful looking person. And so I guess in the way that you treat me, I feel like you feel the same way. Yes. And so like you see people talk about, could you just pick up your spouse's phone? Well, yeah, but Nobody here is going through somebody's phone. If we pick up some, each other's phone, it's to, because one of us is busy doing something. It's like, hey, can you send a text to this person for me or do this or go find this picture or something along those lines. I feel like when you start, if you're looking for it and you don't have a reason to be looking for it, there's already a problem. So whether it's true or not, the relationship is probably in a place where it needs some serious healing or ending. And I did that. I used it as an, I wanted it in my first marriage. I wanted that to happen because in my mind, it was the only reason that I would have to actually get out as if the abuse wasn't a good enough reason and I don't I don't know why my mind worked that way or whatever but it's not I don't know I just don't you go on guide trips a couple of times a year and I've went on a cruise with my girlfriend I'm not really a I'm a homebody. <laughs> he likes to go. <laughs> she likes to go too. She just don't travel far from home. She likes to burn the roads up though. How you figure? You always have. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. I can see grandbabies. But um I just I miss you like crazy when you go. But the thought that, that you've got some ulterior motive in going doesn't cross my mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. So when he goes, I just, he's with the other guys. It, it's usually guy trips. So there's usually anywhere from like two to four other folks with him. And y'all are hunting and it's long hours it's not a great signal and i just kind of wait for him to be in a place by himself because honestly if i call you and you're around all the guys it's not going to be a very meaningful conversation no. anyways <laughs> no and, I, and that's right i mean on trips like that there's not a lot of a lot of privacy mm -mm. right so no, but this past, like this time you were only gone for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, but this, in November, when you went on your hunting trip, I had just had that, um, I just had surgery. I had one of my ovaries removed and he offered to stay home and take care of me. But I'm not, 
I'm not really, when I'm not feeling good, I'm kind of more like just let me be kind of person. So I just kind of hung out by myself. The, you know, like I just wanted to be left alone, I guess. But so I told him to just go ahead and go. But what I didn't expect is that there was a huge shift in hormones when they removed that ovary. And a couple of weeks later, maybe well, a week later? Well, actually, you, you, what helped you a little bit is you actually went on the trip with, with kids. Well, I did. But what I'm saying is it got to a point, like one day I got up. And I'm not really a crying person. And I was crying. Why are you looking like that? I'm not really a crying person. <laughs> am I? Go ahead. <laughs> I don't feel like I am. And I was crying over everything. If it made me mad, if it made me happy, if it made me sad, it didn't matter. So I'm sending a message to my friend who's a nurse at my doctor's office. She's, she's laughing because she was like, it's the hormones. Everything's gotta adjust so we'll test you in a few months and so i sent you this is the first time i've done that to you while you've been traveling with the guys i sent you a text and i was like i need you to facetime me <laughs> i need to see your face <laughs> and then what happened you facetimed me and, you started crying. and i started crying But trust is such a big thing in a relationship. And if you don't have trust, you don't have anything. Honestly, it doesn't matter. You can say you love somebody, but the love determines the trust. Yes, it, would, it, it can't be worth the stress level. Right? No, gosh, no, no. And I've... um. I know I've mentioned before that, so I've seen a lot of it because I worked in the private investigative industry for several years and it, every time somebody would hire them for the purposes of cheating investigations, the relationship was already over. Like it, it, the relationship never survived it, whether there was cheating or not. It never survived that. Every single couple that ended up having an investigation like that ended up in a divorce anyways. So I think a lot of times they were just looking for a reason. I don't know, but don't be that couple. Talk about stuff. Um, and, you know, it's not to say that your gut isn't right. If your gut's telling you that that other person's being secretive and you see things going on in front of you, there's a love issue. Because somebody that really loves you, if you've got that mutual love, it's not going to happen. It's just not. I don't cry all the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to start calling you all the time and asking you where you are and what sure. you're doing and how long it's going to take you to be here and why it didn't take longer, why, why it took longer than it should have and all that? Yes, but don't expect a response real quick. <laughs> 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 yeah, nobody... That's not the kind of calls you want to get from the person you love. No. It's not. It's, it's, um, I don't know. I just rather have more meaningful conversations with you. Plus that way you're excited and you want to talk to that person. <laughs> right. Instead of, when we had when we hadn't talked, when we hadn't talked for a little bit, like on these trips, I don't get, get to talk as much. Whenever she does, we do get the opportunity to talk on the phone. Oh, no. She's talking, and she ain't hearing nothing. <laughs> but she's talking, and I'm trying to tell her something. Like basically, 
I gotta go. Stop. <laughs> I, I've got to call you back. And I'm, I'm like, Shauna. Shauna. And sometimes I go, hey. And she goes, and then just go back to talking. And I'm like, Y'all, I've told you talking. a million times, I have a horrible memory. <laughs> and what happens is, is, if I don't get it all out while I remember it, I'll forget. So I probably should just jot some notes down. Because even one of those days I put in my stories, I was like, I have so much I want to tell him. I was oh, yeah. just waiting for him to call me. And I seen it. I seen it. She didn't send me a text telling me, hey, I got so much I need to tell you. Call me when you can. Oh, I, I left you alone. Yeah. <laughs> As I called, but I'd, I'd looked on Facebook or something, and there it was. Oh, he, uh, yeah, basically, he didn't call last night, and I had so much to say. No, so then I you called bad. the same day. <laughs> you bad. called the same day. Yeah, it was that night. It was in the morning, <laughs> but he, he called that night, and he was like, "What? What? Why did you want to tell me? I saw your stories, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember at all." <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you to our five people that watch us. Um, make sure you comment and share it out. <laughs> See if anybody else, you know, might find some value in it. Hey, y'all, check out my shirt. Mom, queen of the hood. Because motherhood is the roughest hood you can ever live in. <laughs> so I have hoodies like this in my Etsy store. There's a link in the description of the video. Um... But yeah, thank you to the five faithful we have. We appreciate y'all. <laughs> Bring a friend. <laughs> Join us. Let us know in the comments if you enjoy this, if you have anything you'd like for us to talk about. And we will catch you next time. <laughs>